It's finally here. We could talk about all the specs. I don't know. I, you know, do you want to hear me talk about the specs and and go into every uh, new little thing that's coming out? I, I think that maybe we'll weave that stuff into this segment and then maybe future segments. But I, I just want to start with my takeaways. This is an absolutely monster machine. I mean, you're getting the power of if you go with the M4 Max and and not the top end spec, but just like the base level M4 Max. You're getting the same level of power as you were uh, from the top spec M3 Max from last year. So I think in that way, it's actually a really good value this year because the insane horsepower that you got with the top spec last year is available in the base M3, M4 Max spec this year. So, and you also get um, the same amount of cores um, for the top end spec M3 Max chip last year in the base M3 four max this year god this is so confusing this is why i don't want to talk about it you get the 14 core and the 32 core the 14 core cpu the 32 core gpu which is the same as the best model last year and then you get uh, in performance increases so and i think this is where things get interesting so from what we've heard i mean apple says what do they say here that it's up to 3.5 times faster than the m1 max I think that's an interesting spec and clearly Apple's trying to position this as a reason to upgrade from the M1 Max because people still have their M1 Maxes because those things were so dang good that people keep asking themselves, well, why would I upgrade? It's still good enough for me. And that's true. But knowing that you could get up to 3.5 times faster performance, I think is compelling enough for an upgrade from the M1 Max. Not to mention you get the brighter screen, right? So now you can go from six, 600 nits to 1,000 nits, which is a huge increase in SDR brightness, which means that you'll be able to see your screen outdoors, essentially. Like I think 1,000 nits is kind of like the level at which you can actually see your screen comfortably outdoors. It still goes up to 1,600 uh, nits in brightness for HDR scenarios. Um, you get about a 20... 5% performance increase over the M3 Max in single core performance. That's kind of estimated. We're going to have to wait to see what all the breakdowns are. That's the thing. We're at a point now where we're just kind of talking about what Apple has told us. I know Max Tech is probably spent like $30,000 ordering Max and is going to benchmark all this stuff. And we'll know exactly where we're at uh, next week when these things ship next week, right? I think they believe, I think they start shipping next yeah. week. So we'll have all those tests start coming out next week, and we'll know exactly how much powerful this this is. But to me, it seems like the M3 Max is probably eight, it, like 60 to 80 to maybe even 100% faster than the M1 Max. Now, is that a good enough reason to upgrade? I think maybe it is. Let's see. Is there anything else on here? It that's has a the big feature that's worth... display as an option. For only $200 more, you can get the nanotexture display. And I will say that... Um... When I was in college, like, yeah. and, and I eventually got my, you know, 2015 Retina MacBook Pro, like, the before that I had the crummy like 2008 MacBook Pro with like the 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 I don't think I think matte displays were the only option that came on those, but like when I had the the shiny reflective glass display, like you know you're sitting in a lecture hall and you put the thing on your lap and like you know one of the fluorescent lights just like completely outshines some text on like a portion of your screen. And so you're like carefully positioning this thing or, you know, you try to be one of those cool people who's like getting worked on on like a park bench on a college green. And it's like, well, I can see the part of the screen that's like shadowed by my face, but like the direct sunlight in the sky is just like completely, completely blinding the, like the, the outer three quarters of my display, even on like a cloudy Ohio day, like the anti-reflective display. I mean, on the iPad pro, you have to like, upgrade a bunch like three other things before you even are allowed the hundred dollar option but like any model can get the nanotexture display and it's only two hundred dollars more i don't i don't think they've specified like which process it is like whether it's actually like laser etched or whether it's like the chemical coating that the the ipad one gets but that that's a that's a great option i think it's a good like, option i'm not interested in it because anytime you add a, a any kind of anti-reflective coating it tends to dull and mute the colors on the screen so, which I think is one of the reasons why they wanted to make the screen brighter because you can kind of overpower that somewhat with just more light coming through it. Still not for me, but for those of you that need it, you know that you need it. So it's cool yeah. that it is an option and that it is so for affordable. I totally or agree. Or even if your home office just like has an unfortunate window in it, like my <laughs> office has this big window in it, but like, you know, I, I carefully arranged it so that, you know, 
my computer, it never gets like the blinding sunbeam of light directly on my monitor. Cause you know, again, that can just destroy like half of your screen for like, you know, until the sun goes by. Interesting comment from Ellis in the chat. I'm concerned how nano texture looks over time from touching the keys, right? When you have your laptop closed. Now that is interesting because normally with the nano texture, you're not touching the screen. I mean, they even have like a specially sanctioned Apple cleaning cloth that costs $20 so that you can clean your screen. And now your screen is going to be touching your keyboard, which has like oils and all sorts of like grime and stuff all over it, rubbing against your screen a little bit. That is an interesting observation, I have to say. That's why it matters which process they use, because the Pro Display XDR, they say, don't touch the screen, only clean it with our cleaning cloth. And I think the same thing with the Studio Display, too. Whereas the iPad, you know, that, that screen is designed to be touched. It, I would imagine they would probably use the same like chemical process that they use on the iPad rather than like the special laser etching thing that they used on the desktop displays because that you know that is a consideration. Like my my MacBook Pro had had to have its screen replaced because the the oil from my incredibly oily fingers was like tearing away at the screen over time. Yeah, uh, Mark Wilkinson from the chat, knowing Apple, they'll let the customers test that one out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Um, so I would say not a huge upgrade for the Map of Pros this year, although I think the biggest area of improvement is in the M4 Pro chips, which is not a chip that I'm interested in, to be honest with you, just because I want to have the best, right? But even for me, the M4 Max is overkill. I mean, it's, it, if you look at it, I have this up on the screen. With the base level M4 Max, you get 14-core CPU, 32-core GPU, and 36 gigs of memory with a one terabyte SSD. Now, I think what's interesting about this is this is finally at core parity with the M1 Max um, from a GPU perspective, because I think last year you had to spend the extra money to get the additional cores. I don't remember. So I, n now um, my memory is failing me. But you get, so the M1 Max, 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU. And now the base level M4 Max, you get a 14 core GPU, which is obviously 40% more cores. And then 32 core GPU, which mas matches the M1 Max, but you get the additional generations of performance. So it's going to be way just more performance than it was before. So I think this is the machine to go for. If you want to spend an extra $500, you can get the 16 core CPU. So you get two extra cores and a 40 core GPU and 12 extra gigabytes of memory. So they take it up to, to uh, 48 gigs. I don't think that's worth it for 500 bucks. Like that's just icing at that point. I don't think that you're going to need that level of performance. I don't know what you would be doing to require that level of performance, but I think a lot of just creatives end up buying these machines. And I think that the 3499 MacBook Pro, the 16 inch I'm looking at, has plenty, has more power than you would probably need for the next three to four years. So for me, that would be one that I'd be seriously considering. Um, I also think that the M4 Pro chips are going to be the one that's probably perfect for most people, especially if you don't have a weird obsession with getting the best that Apple sells. Uh, I think even just like the base 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M4 Pro, like the 14 core CPU and the 20 core GPU, if you're not doing a lot of like heavy lifting graphically or in video editing, this is the machine to get. I mean, this is going to be the one that is going to serve you really well. And I don't think there's really any reason to upgrade to more memory, maybe to upgrade to more SSD storage, because I feel like you can always use SSD storage. I mean, I have two terabytes in my current MacBook Pro. And SSD storage space is one of those things that really it, uh, shortens the lifespan of your of your computer, right? Like once you run out, now you're having to spend time managing how you store stuff. So I would almost prefer more SSD space, uh, space over like GPU or even like CPU cores, to be honest, because like it's just an everyday practical thing that affects how you use the computer, whereas you may not notice an extra two minutes of, you know, export time on a video.